And welcome back to another episode of the Real Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jacob O'Connor. Real Conversations is a podcast for those dedicated to doing hard things and living a meaningful life. Today's episode is going to be a solo episode. I've had a lot going on and a lot that I've been thinking about, so I figured I would just sit down, kind of let the camera and the mic run, and just jump into it. John and I have been knee deep in the restaurant and build out and everything that's going along with that. And then, you know, I'm still growing this podcast and, and a lot that is going into that as well. And so one of the things I wanted to do to kind of set the tone for this episode is read the poem Invictus by William Ernest Henley, uh, which kind of a funny short backstory. In seventh grade, my basketball coach actually gave this to the entire team and I hung it on the wall in my basement. I used to work out before school. And I would read it every morning until I had it memorized and it's just a, a good poem, and I think it puts you in a good mindset. Um, I don't remember it off the top of my head anymore, so I'm going to go and read it, but here it is. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years, finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of fate. I am the captain of my soul. And I think that's cool because, and I think that's cool because it's talking about, you can control how you react to things. And no matter what may be coming at you from an external circumstance, no matter how many things you're trying to juggle at once, you can find calm inside yourself, you can find peace, and you can continue to push forward no matter how difficult it may be. I think it's something that'll be kind of a theme. This episode has been a theme for the last few months of things are crazy, but you can do it. Keep going. So yeah, let's get into it. The first thought that I has been kind of crossing my mind is sometimes whenever I'm podcasting, you know, it's there's no one else that's in the room, or maybe I'll have like a guest and so it's just the two of us. And it's weird thinking about the fact that there's other people listening to the things that I'm saying, that this is posted on the internet and you guys share it with each other. And, you know, the, I'm talking to an audience, but one of the things that like sometimes will cross my mind is whenever you make sure you want to say the right thing, like, who are you talking to? Who is your audience? And I think in a lot of ways, um, it helps me to think about talking to my younger self. And so one of the things that has been crossing my mind has been, you know, the time is now, like it's, it's go time. And so whenever I was first kind of getting started in business and I wanted to make something happen, I was trying to make so many things happen at once. It was frustrating that I wasn't seeing any progress. And I guess I say I wasn't seeing any progress. It was frustrating that there wasn't as many things happening as I wanted to happen. I wasn't having the immediate payoff. I wasn't making a ton of money. I wasn't meeting as many people as I wanted to. I wasn't in the circles I wanted to be. I didn't know how to do the calculations, how to write the business plan. I didn't know how to get the results that I wanted. And it takes, it has taken a bit of reflection to realize that all of that was necessary. Like the, the time is now, like if you want to have those results one day, then you have to start putting in the work right now. This is day one. It is time to go to make something happen. And I think that happens multiple times throughout a project or throughout an entrepreneurial journey or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. If you have a goal, there's going to be multiple different starting points that may come up. But the first one the one where it feels like you're not moving the needle at all and it feels like nothing is happening. It's taken six years for me to get to the point of where now I'm opening a restaurant and the podcast is growing and and things are in a place where I can go to bed and it's it's tiring. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of stress, but I feel pretty proud about the things that are happening and I'm happy with how things are going in my life. And it took six years to get to that point. And I've had little wins along the way, and I think it's important to acknowledge those, to celebrate those, and those help keep you going in the, low, in the low moments. But if I hadn't started this six years ago, then I wouldn't be at the point that I'm at now. And I think there's, there's some of you listening, or if I'm thinking about talking to my younger self who's questioning getting started, yes, go ahead. Whatever it is, it, it honestly doesn't matter what it is. Just get started now. Remove the friction of the what ifs and the failure and all of that. And just whatever you have in the back of your mind that you think, man, I really want to dive into that head first. I don't care if it's a marathon. I don't care if it's a business. I don't care if it's a podcast. Whatever it is that is in the back of your mind right now, it's go time. This is the time to make it happen. 
the best time to plant a tree is always 20 years ago. You're outside, the sun's out, you're sweating, you wish for some shade. 20 years ago, you should have done something differently. And there's always going to be 20, 20 years from this point in time. But as humans, if we're usually just thinking about, you know, instant gratification, how can I get what I want in this moment? And it's that long-term view of if I just got started, if I plant that tree right now, if I make that phone call, if I make that podcast, if I go run one mile, if you just get started, that payoff will eventually come. And today was one of those days where it, it was a small win day for me. One of those where I'm not where I want to be, but I can look back and I can appreciate how far I've come. And sometimes that's what you need to do to keep going. Um, so some of the things that kind of happened today, I'll just walk you through it. And then I figured I'd catch up on everything with the restaurant. Um, and shoot, I guess I should, I should mention too, if you guys have been enjoying the podcast, if you enjoyed this episode, if you've enjoyed previous episodes, please make sure to share the link with a friend. It really is the best way to help me grow. Uh, I've invested a lot of money, time, and effort into this podcast, like an ungodly amount of all three of those categories. And to see it steadily grow is so rewarding and fulfilling for me. I'm sincerely appreciative of it. But the only way for that to continue to happen is you guys got to keep sharing the link and sharing it with each other and talking about it. So I appreciate it. There's that little blurb. I'll, I'll stop it now and get back into the the main core of the episode. Um, but going into the restaurant industry, John and I right now, we're trying to find as many people in this space that have had success that can offer insight to what is to come for both of us and how to best steer and navigate this ship. And we had a, a great meeting this morning. Um, there is a fast food chain or fast casual chain called Freddy's Custard and Steak Burgers. Uh, most of you probably just know it as Freddy's, but they've got about 400 locations all across the U.S. So they're absolutely massive. Uh, they had a successful exit, that team did, and uh, it's a very popular restaurant to go to. Uh, I would compare it to kind of like a Dairy Queen or a Wendy's or a Culver's. It's pretty much that same category. And one of the people who started that, his name is Scott Redler, and he started that and grew it to what it is today. And John and I had the opportunity this morning to go and meet with him. And we talked for almost an hour and a half. And, you know, while unfortunately it wasn't a podcast, it wasn't recorded as anything I, I can share with you guys, it was uh, one of those meetings where it's like, how are we here right now? Like, A, the fact that he's taking the time to answer our questions, to sit down, to offer his advice. And then B, just, I mean, <laughs> the, the whole gravity of the moment was so cool. You walk in, it's a super nice office. There's just an F1 car immediately in the office with all the logos and decked out. And you go up the elevator and you look at all the nice artwork and architecture into their offices. And they've got some real cool desks that are made like kind of out of recycled airplane pieces. And it, it was just super cool. And he's telling us about all his different failures that he had in the restaurant world. He started different concepts. He franchised different concepts. And they some worked, some didn't. He lost a lot of money. Uh, he made a little bit of money. And then Freddy's, the big home run, it growing to hundreds of locations, and then him being able to exit the business and sell off and you know make a good amount of money. He's talking about a sports car collection and just other things like that. And him still being a down-to-earth guy and him still being willing to take the time to talk to John and I to offer insight it, it was a really, really cool meeting and a relationship that John and I will definitely continue to develop and, you know, hopefully one day get him on the podcast. Um, but it, it's little things like that, that as you're on this daunting journey and you get overwhelmed, you get stressed, there's so many things going on at once. Uh, having a win like that is super, super cool. And the amount of, the amount of gratitude for the people that have been willing to meet with us, willing to help us out, uh, I, I'm just so grateful. Um, shout out to Miraj. I know that you listened to the podcast and you took some time today to come out to look at the site and actually explain a couple things to John and I as we're trying to learn about everything that's happening. And, uh, you know, that that was very much so appreciated. And there's just a whole host of other people that um, have, have played a big hand in everything that's going on. I'm just really, really thankful for that. There's a lot going on with, with John and I taking this on. I mean, we're learning about interior build outs. We're learning about real estate and finishes and equipment and plumbing and electrical and, you know, everything that goes into building a physical space to the specification of what you would like the end result to be. 
And then at the same time, you're learning about different insurance providers, insurance companies, getting business insurance, getting insurance for your employees, all the accounting, the entity structuring that's going on, how to protect yourself from different liability while also, you know, maximizing your tax opportunity. And then at the same time, you're looking at how does this restaurant actually operate, setting up your vendor accounts, making sure that you know the system and that you're not bottlenecking. And it is just such an immersive experience. And we have all these different buckets. John kind of made a joke this morning that we're getting our MBA in so many different areas all at once. And so, you know, it's been, it's been a lot. We're making progress. Um, I, the last time that we talked about the restaurant on the podcast maybe was a month ago. Uh, so since then, we've got our general contractor who will come in and build out the space. We've got our permits from the city for building out. They've started digging this week. They're working through the plumbing. So we're actually having pipes go into the into the the building and the concrete's all dug up and there's dirt everywhere. It's an absolute mess in there right now. But it's cool because John and I know what it's going to look like at the end. And to see it go through this metamorphosis is such a cool, cool thing to experience. So that's going on. And we're just... We're, we're knee deep in it right now. And it's great. I'm happy that I've still been able to podcast. Like honestly, being able to take an hour with Brady last week and then Joe before that and the episodes before that. Podcasting is, it's kind of a nice outlet for me. I mean, it, it is work. There is a lot that goes into in the effort and the time and, and the editing and everything that goes along with that. Um, but honestly, with how things are going and how immersed we are in the restaurant, even though I'm carving out time that would be leisure time, maybe I'm sleeping a little bit less, even though I'm having to do that to still keep the podcast going, it has been nice to kind of take that break and to catch up with someone and talk about something other than just the restaurant, even though I'm ecstatic about it. That's just been what life has looked like um, pretty much all day for the last six months at this point. I mean, it's been an absolute wild journey that one that I hadn't predicted coming up, but it's like I said, you know, if you never get started, if you don't plant that seed, then nothing can ever come into fruition and you can't get to the point of where you are now. And I, I'm so excited, so excited for what's to come. Uh, we're hoping to open the restaurant uh, late August, early September is what we're shooting for. And, you know, have all you guys come out and check it out and love to get your your feedback. And we're going to have our hurdles and our hiccups and things are going to come up. I mean, that's what happens anytime you open a restaurant, but I'm just so excited to actually see all of this hard work come into fruition and to be there. And then for everything that John and I intend to build after that, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff happening at once. So but yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have for, for you guys to keep this episode short. Like I mentioned, if you enjoy it, please share the link. You can find me on Instagram at Jacob O'Connor. The podcast is at real period conversations you guys have any feedback i'm curious actually if you guys are watching the podcast shoot me a dm or an email or a text or something i'm always curious how many people are actually watching it versus listening because i don't see that distinction on the back end i just see the downloads so i'd be curious to know that and um yeah that's all i have i'll see you guys next week enjoy your week